Hello and welcome. I'm John Swisher, VP of Sales at CureWorks, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, OnBase Reporting Dashboards. Now, you can't measure what you can't see, right? So having a reporting component to serve up the metrics you need to gain insights into your operations is what I would call essential. We've got a few use cases and real world examples of on-base reporting dashboards to share with you today, but before I introduce today's presenters, a few quick housekeeping items. Um, we've muted the attendees' microphones, but we wanna make sure you're able to engage with us. So please utilize the chat box feature to drop questions uh, on the topic or share your struggles and experiences. Uh, we'll be monitoring these throughout the session. And secondly, we are recording today's webinar. Uh, we'll share a link to the session for you to revisit or share with your colleagues. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce Dan Smith, who joins me today. For the past six years, Dan has been serving as CareWorks' lead senior sales engineer, putting to use his more than 17 years of experience implementing OnBase and CareWorks solutions in the payer and provider space. And again, I'm John Swisher. I joined CareWorks as a senior sales engineer back in 2014 and held up various roles in solution development before becoming CureWorks Vice President of Sales in December of 2020. Now, Dan, let's get started. Perfect, thank you, John. Make sure I'm on the uh, slideshow now. Yep. <laughs> so a good majority of our audience probably has one of these or knows what it is, um, an activity tracker. It could be your Apple Watch, a Fitbit, a Garmin, um, whatever it may be. Uh, John, do you have one? I had a Fitbit, uh, but it died on me. Oh, yeah, we just bought my son a Fitbit. He loves it. It tracks his sleep, tracks his steps. He he might go a little overboard. You can, you know, uh, a little data paralysis analysis. I don't I don't know. But uh, yeah, I had an Apple Watch for a while. I loved it for checking my heart rate, going up those uh, climbing stairs, the uh, dance offs at weddings, you know, seeing where, where you land afterwards. Um, but you know, everyone loves the data they get from this. And, and one of the sure. great things about the data is that with the corresponding application you get on your phone, it puts it in an easy to read, um, compiled um, application where you could track that data, your move time, your walk time, your heart rate, your sleep time. It's all compiled in an easy to read uh, application right there. Um, where it accumulates all that data and you could go back in time as well. It's, it's nice. Dan, um, real quick, there's yep. one thing you mentioned that you hadn't mentioned before when, as we've been running through this is analysis paralysis. And I, I really like that term simply because to your point right here, I mean, this is, even this is, is a lot of data and a lot of information, right? And this is the nicely condensed presented version of that to you right so data is the key everyone should be able to get it and it's it's really the key to to the main point is is to make that data actionable right and i'm probably getting ahead of myself but, but back to you oh no problem that's perfect yeah so taking that data you know why is it important because you really can't improve uh what you don't measure so if you don't have that data you really can't measure it um, so this goes really well into reporting dashboards in OnBase. One thing I want to bring up, since OnBase is a point-and-click configurable solution, you need to make sure that you are adding keywords that you want to report on. You're adding attributes to your work view applications that you want to report on. Um, there is a lot of system level detail that you could get as far as entry exit times through workflows and whatnot um, but you really need to pay attention to how you're building your solutions so that you can improve on what you measure uh, by capturing those data elements in the beginning uh, so typical uh, reporting solution uh, reporting dashboards it's native to OnBase, it's built into the Unity client, now the web client. Um, 
really used to analyze from an on-base administrator all the way to a business end user, uh, everything you have within the system. So performance through business data. Yeah, and I, I love the definition that, that you know, Highland supplies that's on screen, but, you know, kind of as you were talking through it and kind of adding your take on it, Daniel, I, I feel like it's a little limited as well. I think, you know, from my perspective, what it leaves out is that the data is live, right? It's interactive. It allows on, you know, reporting of, of data potentially that lives anywhere. And, and it allows you to, to point and point and click, create it in such a way that it allows you to make business decisions on that data. Now, I feel like that's implied, but I feel like it's important to point out. And I want to call, call another point you made on, on the previous slide when you talk about being very aware of, you know, the data allocations we're setting uh, for use with these dashboards and how, you know, while we can perform that calculation live on a dashboard, and I think we'll get into this a little bit later, but there may be a, a healthier way to do that, right, in the way you set up your dashboard versus another way. Definitely. Perfect. So quick examples before we get into kind of key points about dashboards and the demonstration. So uh, in this case of the AP invoice processing monitoring, this is a, a typical workflow dashboard. I think across the industries, AP, you know, spans that, that list. So we have a uh, graphical view, uh, watermarks, bar charts, and then the invoice, uh, the actual data that we're pulling that from down at the bottom in the grid view. Uh, moving on, uh, so for a lot of you that do have work view, taking that same concept, um, what is the status instead of like the workflow queue, you're using status now because you're, you're working with data and not documents in a queue, um, the request time, pie charts, being able to drill down and filter based on this data. And again, having those cards with date, days to close at the bottom. Um, moving over to higher education, uh, we have an applications by program here, uh, full dashboard where again, the users that are going in here can um, filter based on these graphs and drill down to the data they're looking for. So regardless of, uh, you know, where where you're at, whether it's, you know, AP or you do have work view or not, I think, you know, what we're getting here to is whether it be, you know, historical data that we want to utilize for uh, future trending or it's our current inventory or it's just pure analytics to see where, you know, in that last one, where our students is, where the trends towards students majors are going. Uh, right, and as Dan, I mean, gets into his healthcare dashboard here, I'm sure we'll talk about you know the different types of deficiencies that you could run into when you're reviewing a, a medical chart. And again, oh, yeah. we're talking about workloads here, right? So from a management perspective, you know, I need to be able to have insight into my team and their process. And again, the more the more that we can allow OnBase to manage that, the more data we're gonna have surrounding that, and the more easily we're gonna be able to report on that end to end. Exactly, and uh, in my previous uh, role as an OnBase admin at the Cleveland Clinic, I built all of the um, reports using Crystal reports there. This was before reporting dashboard came out, so wasn't able to use it then, I wish I was. Um, but I build out all the scanning reports for the HIM department. Uh, I linked it up to Kronos uh, login, logout data, or check, yeah, uh, where basically doing performance reporting based on how much they scanned within their their 35 hour week, 20 hour week, whatever they worked that week. So uh, really built some nice reports using that data from external mm -hmm. sources as well. Very cool. So they could probably pick out, you know, who the rock stars are, who may need some additional assistance and like when we, you know, over time, you see volumes going up. Okay. Maybe it's time to hire too. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it, the system's very capable. So we'll get into a demo. You'll see reports again. Don't worry about that. Uh, 
But moving on within the PowerPoint, you know, it's really a self-service on-demand reporting tool. And, you know, if you're a long-term, long-time on-base user, point-and-click configurable is, is a word you hear during every demo, every call probably. Um, but it, it truly is a point-and-click configurable tool uh, with reporting dashboards as well. So typical customer reporting would be a business analyst, department analyst, whatever it may be, uh, working with IT uh, to spec out what data they need for a report, and then them building out that report. It can be a long drawn out uh, work uh, where you're going through that whole process of uh, configuring that data in a way that represents that that business unit's uh, needs. Um, but again, using on-base reporting dashboards, we can give rights to uh, those business analysts to create um, their data provider, their dashboards, uh, from an easy point-and-click tool. Um, you could preload it with uh, more complex um, data providers that use SQL uh, from a development perspective that they could just use uh, to build their reports onto, their dashboards on top of. Um, but really trying to make that an easier to use, you know, reduce the cost of uh, building out those tools um, limit the time that it takes to get those out to the users, the management, whoever needs those reports to uh, do their business. So Dan, you know, I, you know, going back to your history, 17 years of on-base experience and talking about crystal reports, which I have a faint recollection of as well. And then, you know, report services that, you know, that was kind of on-base's main uh, reporting tool until reporting dashboards came around. And I know, you know, when you live in something every day, it's <clears throat> it's easy. You get the hang of it. But I mean, on on your on a scale of one to ten, I mean, how easy is dashboards and and just the ramp up time to be able to work with them versus something like a crystal or report services that we used to have back in the day? I mean, it's it's light years ahead, right? Oh yeah, it's definitely a ten compared to those two. Uh, reporting dashboards was it you essentially had to build out multiple queries inside of one uh, query to get the data you wanted. But um, this is so much easier, um, not to mention Highland has built out some predefined um, data queries within there. So if you're just looking at documents, you could just click the document data provider and not have to create a SQL, uh, SQL select string. Yeah. yeah, we no longer have to be experts exactly nice ah, perfect yes yeah, so it is truly feature rich um you know like everything else inside of on base they continually add to it so uh, we'll go through some of those during the demo but you know really uh, moving forward to cloud development they're adding uh different features with that that i'll show you but uh <laughs> I'll try to speed through these uh, reporting dashboard features so we can get into the demo. But and let know, me interrupt really, it, Dan, real yeah. quick. I apologize. A, a question came in. I want to make sure we're touching on it before I I forget. It was a simple. And can I can I hide a column at at runtime? And and the answer is yes, very easily. And I think we'll get into a little bit more of the the sharing functionality later. But that's a a very easy way to be able to share you know what you've created maybe to a, a limited. Uh, audience with maybe limited data. So um, simply get in and remove that column. It's it's as simple as dragging a field uh, out of view and sharing out. So the answer, absolutely yes. Sorry, Dan, back to you. Oh, no problem. And I mean, that question kind of is answered in some of these uh, key features. So again, that point and click configurable <laughs> dashboard designer, sharing dashboard. So I'll show this during the demo, but um, maybe development created a master uh, dashboard that encompasses your whole team and you want to create a copy of that and just display a filter that is only your data um, i could show that to you during the demo um, interactive this one is by far what makes it uh, stand out 
from any other reporting tool out there. It's built into OnBase. Um, having that filterable interactive but also the display actions where you can um, if you're reporting on a document within a workflow you can create a display action to based on a double click automatically open that document from the workflow um, so you could use these reports as that front end you know landing page that users go to when they're logging in on base um, they could just go to a reporting dashboard, look at their workflow, open up the documents they need directly from there. And that is- Yeah, and I think it, it's that's a perfect point, Dan, because it's it's not only even the, the workflow object, it could be that entire workflow queue if you just want to dive into that, that queue deeper. So being oh, yeah. able to take what was like limited to effectively custom queries before and now being able to visually uh, see that that additional layer of data and being able to slice and dice it to constrain it to the specific you know invoices or objects wherever they may be in, in that report i couldn't agree with you more oh yeah um i'll show this during the demo but uh moving down to again the cloud first uh, they built this reporting web viewer um essentially for our long-term Mombase customers, if you could think of a doc pop, essentially a, a URL generator for uh, dashboards. Um, we mentioned this, the data provider wizard, um, being able to schedule reports. Now I will give one caveat to schedule reports. It is truly um, just report data that is scheduled and sent out. It is not the pretty dashboard uh, that you get with the uh, the dashboard interface. Uh, but again, that data is very important. And again, uh, on base granular security. You, know, you can limit if someone doesn't have access to a certain keyword or document type, they won't gain access by going through a report to get that. It still uh, goes down through that. Uh, user groups and rights. I went a little too far there, but uh, being able to export directly from the client um, and the web client, there's a little button, upload, and you can copy and upload those, uh, the pretty dashboards to an actual document. So if you're creating uh, a daily report and you want to archive that within OnBase to, you know, have it for historical reasons, you could do that as well. Another question came in, Dan, it was, do, do you need to have specific rights in order to create unique reports? And if I'm understanding the, the question correctly, it's probably originating from, do do we just open this up to everyone? It, absolutely, you can you can allow only certain users to create new reports versus view and or even edit uh, those reports. So to Dan's point, that layer of, of granularity that you're used to with OnBase in general continues forward throughout the, the reporting dashboards product. Yep. And John, if you could remind me during the demo, I'll open up config and show the uh, the user groups and rights for dashboards and kind of show you where and what is in there. Yeah. Perfect. Um, again, I'll show this within the demo, but uh, there are sample reports out there to help you get started um, in community. Uh, we could point you to those as well. Um, another, um, I'll show you this as well, reporting if any of our customers had re report services, is that what it's called? Yeah, the, report the older, services. Yeah, the older uh, reporting tool that OnBase had, there is an export of all of those reports um, within the community site as well for reporting dashboards. Another caveat with that, it will only create data providers, so what is gonna give us the data, it it does not have the dashboards associated with those. So you would have to create the dashboards to link up to those. Um, again, most of those are more on base administration, but still good reports. Mm -hmm. You can use them to um, build out other reports very easily.
Perfect. And I think second to last before we get into the demo, just go through all the different types. And I'll show you this during the demo. Pivots, grids, pie, bar, uh, column and line charts, gauges, scorecards, scatter charts, uh, coral pleth, geopoint maps. Uh, it, you know, it's everything that's in any other reporting tool. They have it with an Ombase uh, reporting dashboards. Quick view, uh, high level uh, architecture. Uh, over on the left, we have that data source layer. Uh, if we haven't mentioned it, um, you can uh, pull data from third party by creating a, a external uh, ODBC lookup into that data. Um, but again, we could easily pull from OnBase only. Uh, and then that goes through the app server. And then from there, we have the Unity client, which would be a tool to view the reporting dashboard, the web client, and then the uh, reporting web viewer, which I'll show. Again, that's more of like a uh, an individual report with uh, limited uh, use that you want to just send out through an email or something. So said, said in a shorter way when it comes to, and this was a question that came up, external data, Dan, can we report on external data within reporting dashboards? Yeah, definitely. Um, you can set up external data sources within the uh, the administration of the gallery or of the reporting dashboard. Yeah, so I mean, as long as as long as you allow us to to have it, we'll take it all. Yep. All right, and keep me honest on time, John. Um, I'm going to kind of go through fairly fast on these. Um, I want to get more into like building the reports and whatnot rather than you know talking about the reports we have in the solution but uh, this first report here is with one of our own uh, solutions that we build for Medicare appeals and grievances uh, this is a case assignment uh, that are due within 72 hours so cases that are due within 33 days um, first thing that filterable data so if you didn't see that when I click on my cases it filters and only shows what's available uh, down below. So if I needed to work this case, I could just double click that and it'll open up that work view object and I could perform any work I need to do right there from the report. You won't get that from Crystal Reports, Microsoft Reporting, any other reporting tool uh, besides the OnBase reporting dashboards. Um, I mentioned this during the PowerPoint, but having the ability, so it, maybe your OnBase administrator creates a report like this that is uh, an overview, shows all of our users in there, um, but you don't want to go in here and click this button to filter to your data. What you can do if you have rights, again, you can copy to new and then put in a permanent filter, if you will, based on your username. So what that looks like is this. So I don't have that clickable uh, first graph there. I just go directly to my data uh, within the solution. So pretty easy. Uh, another example we have in there is uh, this one, which is again, a full overview, all of our users, all of the case data we have within this WorkView application, um, the graphs, again, that are filterable, and then open activities and open cases down below that. So uh, again, if we wanted to work it based on an activity, we could get to different areas within your OnBase solution um, so that your users don't have to go to like maybe a top level and then drill down in there. You could go directly to where they need to get their work done. Hey Dan, we were talking. Uh, yeah, you were with us. We were talking to some uh, some folks recently about some of their, if you remember their their struggles. Now they don't have dashboards. They don't have on base in general. But they were talking about the daily work that they do, color coding uh, their incoming work for their team to say, hey, the manager comes in every day and they 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 look at where all their different buckets are. They color code it, assign it to their team so their team knows exactly what needs to process first. Now, I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. 
did you color code these rows or columns before we did this demo manually? I did not. So these were, <laughs> I think when you built the demo a couple of years ago, it uh, you built it out there, but it is um, something that you can do fairly easily when you're building out the dashboard initially. Um, again, if, yeah. if you have rights to go in there, but yeah, you can easily color code based on date by value, add icons in there. Yeah, and I think for this one, we had decided, you know, if the due date is today or earlier, you know, make it red. And if it's today plus one or minus one, I'm trying to think, it, we would color it pink. Um, but yeah, that, that's, you know, something that we we don't talk about often. And I think it's overlooked, but it's it's the configuration dynamically being applied to data that is ever changing so you're not wasting time you know trying to figure out where your work is it's it's constantly moving with you and on top top of that these dashboards are updating every five seconds so you're constantly seeing live data yep and that is configurable it doesn't have to be every sure. five seconds <laughs> um again uh, I created a copy of this and filtered it down so that I'm only seeing my data. Um, fairly easy to do, but uh, something you could give your users um, access to if you wanted to be have them uh, create those reports. Um, just want to go th through some other uh, samples here. This is a uh, kind of a an overall look into um, our appeals and grievances solution. Uh, it is a WorkView solution, um, uh, a full case management solution, but this kind of gives you a good uh, example of that overall view. So uh, over on the left, we have those cards, uh, gives us a good call out with the amounts. Um, we can use a date slider at the top if we want to uh, narrow down the amount of data we're pulling in there. Um, again, each of these graphs in the middle, you could click down to filter on that data and really get to all that data you need. Um, a really good example, you know, kind of encompassing all of those different data elements and all of the data of a full case there. Yeah, and Dan, I, I was supposed to keep you honest on time and, and I kept jumping in as well. So we're, we are running up on time. You did ask me to have you show sharing, which Dan, myself, your your account executive would be more than happy to walk through with you. But I want to make sure we're touching on um, the last couple of things you had planned, which was that, that new web-based configuration tool. Um, and I think you maybe had two more things after that yeah so the first one is the reporting viewer uh, looks like it timed out on me while I was uh, going through the PowerPoint uh, but essentially like I mentioned it is a link that you could send through email um, if you're in the unity client and you want to send this dashboard you can either copy to hyperlink or you could send to mail and that'll put a hyperlink in there and that hyperlink will go directly to i let it sit too long hopefully it'll come up here a second but it'll essentially go to this new web viewer for that dashboard um, and this is ep5 so if you didn't know was it EP5 they came out with dark mode? So just showing you the uh, dark mode of the web client uh, with that report viewer here. There we go. Uh, again, you don't see all those buttons around the top or the left. This is really just viewing, but you can filter down on the graphs and get to the data you want. Um, really cool feature. Um, you could also have this up on a, uh, a screen within a department if you want to have a visibility maybe in a call center type situation where you know as users walk by they could see how many calls are in the queue or what they need to get through um, what else was there I think the other one was just so there was we could open up objects and that's something that's been a couple versions from the web client but you also had a new feature is that you can now even do a uh, dashboard configuration That's right. from the web client too. So for 
you know, users who are, are moving to that, that web first focus, uh, you know, Highland's done a really good job of, of bringing as much as possible with each release into the web client, even including, again, configuration. So um, while it isn't a 100% parity, you know, the ability to get in and make some of those simple modifications that Dan was talking about or that we got questions about are absolutely perfect scenarios. And, you know, for your lightweight users, that this is where they come to get their work, why not put it in, in a lightweight client for them so that they can truly access it anywhere they have access to a browser, right? Yep. Yeah, and you know, as you mentioned, as Highland is getting cloud first and they're adding more to the REST API, this does use the REST API uh, that they built it off of, adding all those configuration components in there. This will just get more and more, um, and it will eventually be the go-to client for reporting dashboard configuration. But, yeah, I, I agree, and I personally just like the look and the feel of of the web better and it just even the way that it, it navigates and animates its opening maybe that's just my my preference um well i think dan it, that brings you to the end of of your presentations i wanted to check real quick i think i saw two more come in yeah so one was can we measure team performance and i think we talked about that we maybe didn't highlight it in today's um, webinar, but we'll be sure to follow up with you because to Dan's point, what he was talking about earlier of, of making sure we're logging those times, absolutely, you know, when we're, when we're assigning uh, objects or documents to users through workflow and we can log those transition times, absolutely. Um, and one of them that uh, we'll have to show you is is the team versus individual performance um, when we connect later. And then the uh, second one was, I heard about a reporting dashboard workshop. What is that? Um, so in, the short answer is it's a uh, it's it's a workshop for us to for us and potentially Highland to identify a, a good candidate for dashboard. So what we do is we come in, we kind of ask you about your process. We kind of see what that delta is, if there is any, on you know the data that you're trying to report on and make decisions upon. And then we're gonna find out where we can get that ancillary data and then create a dashboard for you to um, present internally. Um, so it's usually a really good way um, to kind of bring that attention to to you know your management if this is a tool that you can really benefit from. Um, I think that was it for questions. Um, yeah, that brings us to the end of today's session. So uh, I want to thank everyone for taking some time today um, to to listen to Dan and I ramble on. Uh, about reporting dashboards. Um, and I'd like to thank Dan for, for his in, sharing his insight with us today. Um, attendees will see a survey um, about today's webinar. I think we were planning to do that earlier, but I had Dan skip over that. Um, so sorry about that, Jenny. And, and we'll launch after, uh, that poll will launch after we conclude this session. Um, and please keep an eye out for, um, for your email for a link to today's recording. Uh, on behalf of CureWorks, um, I thank each of you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Thank you, John.